when should we set our calendars for the singularity party? Well, now, if we're going by Ray Kurzweil's predictions, we're looking at something like 2045. Okay, so not too far off. I might still be around for that. You and me both. But other folks, they say it's further out, maybe even centuries from now. The thing is, getting hung up on a date on a calendar, that might be missing the point entirely. So you're saying it's not about the destination, but the journey itself. Exactly. And that journey has already begun. So less flipping a switch, more like turning a dial. We're slowly cranking up the intelligence, pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And with each turn of that dial, the world changes a little bit more. And just like turning a dial, we're constantly adjusting, adapting to this new normal. Think about it. Self-driving cars, facial recognition, AI writing code. That was all science fiction not that long ago. Now it's becoming as normal as using a smartphone. Things are shifting under our feet as we speak. So, okay, maybe the singularity isn't going to be this big Hollywood blockbuster event. Mm -mm. But even if it's more of a slow burn, a gradual thing, it still makes you wonder, right? What kind of world are we stepping into? Is it going to be utopia? Or are we all going to end up being ruled by robot overlords? Well, I have to say, the articles you sent, they really dig into that. Yeah. And I think it's smart how they don't shy away from either side of the coin, the amazing potential. But also, let's be real, those anxieties that come with this whole intelligence explosion thing. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, we'll start with the good stuff. You know, the reason we're even talking about this, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of those optimistic scenarios that get people excited? One of the articles, I think it was the one about uh, the future of problem solving, it, it talked about how AI could be the key to solving these huge problems that humanity has been wrestling with forever. Like, imagine AI cracking the code on climate change. Okay, now that's a future I can get behind. No more <laughs> doom scrolling about the planet melting. Sign me up for that. <laughs> exactly. Or what about diseases like Alzheimer's, cancer, things that we've thrown everything at but still haven't really figured out? AI could be the answer, sifting through data, seeing patterns, leading to cures we can only dream of right now. Right, like having an AI doctor that can diagnose and fix anything. Pretty amazing when you think about it. Yeah. But, and I think this is the part that makes people nervous, there's always another side to the coin. We have to talk about those potential downsides, the risks that come with all this. You're absolutely right. Gotta look at it from all angles, acknowledge the good and the, well, the not so good. One thing that comes up a lot, and I get it, is the impact on jobs. If AI can do everything faster, cheaper, better, then what happens to us? Do we all become obsolete? Yeah, that fear of becoming obsolete, I think that's a big one. The whole robots taking our jobs scenario. And honestly, it's not entirely unfounded. As AI gets smarter, some jobs, maybe even whole professions, they're going to be automated. We're already seeing that, right? Yeah. Factories, customer service, even creative fields. It's kind of mind-blowing and also a bit unnerving. But I remember one of the articles, it made the point that, yeah, AI is going to change the job market, but it'll also create brand new industries, jobs we can't even imagine right now. Exactly. Think about it. A hundred years ago, nobody knew what a web developer was. Social media manager didn't exist. AI could do the same thing, reshape the entire landscape in ways we can't even fathom yet. So instead of being scared of what we don't know, maybe it's about being open to those changes. But even if there are more new jobs, there's still that question of control, right? How do we mm -hmm. make sure that AI stays a tool? A powerful tool, yeah, but still a tool we control. And that's where things get really interesting, right? Programming a machine to do one thing, that's one thing. But what happens when they start making their own decisions, decisions that have real impact in the real world? That's the real challenge and I think the real opportunity with AI. You know, it, it's funny. We always think of AI as this cold, calculating thing. But the more we talk about it, the more I realize it's really making us ask some pretty deep questions about ourselves, you know? Yeah. Like, what does it mean to be human? What are our values? What happens to humanity when intelligence goes beyond, well, us? Yeah. It's like AI is holding up a mirror, right? Making us really look at ourselves and think about what it means to be human. And that's what makes this whole thing so fascinating. You know, it's not just about the tech, the kind of the algorithms. It's about us. It's about understanding what makes us tick, defining like what our values even are in a world where intelligence goes way beyond what we thought was possible. It's like that scene in 2001, a space odyssey with yeah. the monolith. Right? It's like this <laughs> thing that shows up and suddenly... We have to evolve to rethink everything. Let's love that analogy. 